Hello and welcome to the Guna Tool. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series, our show in which we look at the players that have been linked to Arsenal in a statistical and analytical way with the help of some expert insight. And today we are going to be talking about a brand new signing for Arsenal, courtesy of Gunner Blog, aka James McNicholas of The Athletic, who reported and broke the news yesterday that Arsenal would indeed be signing Mika Biereth from Fulham, who offered him a professional contract, which he turned down in favour of an offer from Arsenal. Uh, Mika is a very exciting young 18-year-old striker, and we're going to learn all about him in today's show. If you are new to the channel, typically this is a show in which we break down the players that Arsenal get linked to. It's been quite rare that we've been able to talk about players that Arsenal have actually signed, so it's a nice change. And if you are indeed new, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you are joining us anyway, make sure you hit that like button too. And if you would like to help support the channel even further, first things first, you can go and vote for us in this year's Football Content Awards. The information is scrolling across the bottom of the screen for you guys now. And of course, you can join up as a member to help support the channel too and get access to lots of lovely stuff as well. But let's crack on with today's show. And I'm going to be joined, I'm very thankful to be joined by Cam Ramsey, who is part of the Fulhamish podcast, which is obviously a Fulham-based uh, podcast talking all things Fulham. And Cam has been very so uh, grateful to send us in some expert insight to tell us all about Arsenal's new striker, Mika Biereth. Firstly, Arsenal fans should know that they've acquired a, a real aspiring goal machine in Mika Biereth. He's an 18-year-old with an astonishing goals-to-game ratio and a reputation to match as well. In 21 games, Mika scored 21 goals for under-18 set-up last season, and he also supplied his teammates with 13 assists along the way, which is absolutely incredible. He has a keen eye for creativity, his head's always lifted, and his movement set him apart too, which is why he bagged and assisted so many goals last season for us. He eventually ended the top scorer in the under-18 Premier League South. In the 18-yard box, he's aware of his surroundings. He instinctively knows where the goal is, even with his back towards the target. He intimidates at full tilt, and positively, he isn't selfish and he isn't tunnel-visioned. His head's always lifted, his ears are always open for the next man, and more importantly, obviously as the striker's supposed to, he's always ready to pull the trigger too. His lethal ability in front of the target catapulted Steve Wigley's development set up towards the Premier League National Final against Man City at their academy ground as well. We sadly lost 3-1, but it was a massive achievement for us lads to be there, and Mika was obviously a main factor in us reaching that point as well you know it, it, it's unheard of really at youth level for Fulham to even come to that kind of stage against a Man City team which produces so many top top talents so we're really proud of that I mean he's a centre forward that's capable of running both channels consummately and Mika will slot into operations at London Colney seamlessly honestly he's intelligent and he'll suit Arsenal's fluent offensive philosophy at youth level too I mean, in many ways, joining Arsenal system is a huge step up for him. There'll be a lot of opportunities. And if he carries his, his astonishing form into um, his outings for the Gunners junior folds, he'll surely progress up the ranks at an alarming rate. Mikel will definitely understand the importance of hitting the ground running, but especially at a club at Arsenal, where dedication at young age will, is respected and recognised, he'll know there's a clear pathway into senior squad if he's willing to adapt and learn. I mean, you've only got to look so far as Emil Smith-Rowe and Bakaya Saka in the last, you know, maybe 18 months or so and see how they progressed. And he'll certainly want to have a little piece of that himself as soon as he arrives. I mean, he rejected a professional contract with us, which stings a little bit. It's a bold move at his young tender age as well, especially when he hasn't necessarily had any real first team football at Fulham too. But he's going to definitely perform at the top of his game. He's got a great track record. Um, and he's more or less joining the right club that will understand the importance of uh, nurturing as well. Um, per Matasaka and um, Mikel Arteta will definitely monitor him closely. They'll admire his uh, skill and talent too, so I have no, no doubts about him underperforming at the Gunners whatsoever. I mean, it's difficult because Arsenal have such an array of uh, young starlets in their, in their ranks, including obviously... Aziz, you've got Molia and uh, Balogun too. Um, but BRF, he's an assured talent. He's laden with potential. 
and he'll certainly bolster the standard of any level or age group he competes within for Arsenal. There's no doubt about it. And lastly, before we sign off, um, he <laughs> Arsenal fans will definitely be pleased to know that in February this year, Mika swept home an emphatic hat trick against Tottenham Hotspur as uh, our young whites swept aside um, Tottenham five nil. It was quite a romping. It was really, really good to see because no one really likes Tottenham anyway, do they? And um, if anything, he's acquainted himself to ruffling Spurs feathers. And hopefully in years to come, he'll do the same in front of a packed Emirates in the North London derby. And uh, we wish him all the best because uh, you've got yourself a real gem there. And uh, all you've got to do is give him maybe a little time to adapt to obviously settle in new surroundings. But he'll give you his all and undoubtedly he'll bag you so many goals. So uh, enjoy the ride, enjoy the process and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing him in the Premier League very soon and hopefully he won't bag a hat-trick against us when we arrive again. <laughs> A massive thank you to Cam. Now, what a great guy telling us that he's loving the fact he's scoring against Spurs. Who does like Spurs at the end of the day? Yeah, what a great bit of insight there from Cam. You can go and follow Cam on Twitter at 94CamRam. You can also follow the guys over at the Fulham pod at Fulhamish Pods as well. So make sure you go and check those guys out for all of your Fulham-related needs. Really interesting bit of insight on a player that it's, it's really difficult to kind of get real insight and videos and clips. Obviously, if you go onto YouTube and type in who is Mika Biraf, you'll get kind of a couple of clips and a few minutes worth of, of video footage of him playing in the youth divisions because he's only really played in the under 18s youth leagues, which is pretty tricky to get footage of. I mean, even looking on Y Scout, all that's available is a couple of games from I think it's the Checker Trade EFL Trophy and one of the Premier League Two games, which he got involved with. He has played for the under 23s. Uh, on a number of occasions. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but it's in that sense, being able to get that insight, it's really crucial to understanding more about uh, Mika Bira. From actually seeing a few clips of him, he's not slow. I mean, in terms of height, if we have a look at kind of those main stats, he is six foot one. He's not short by any means. And he's still got that height about him that's really important. In 2021, uh, 2020, 21 season, he got 21 goals and 13 assists in, in 21 games, which is an amazing return considering kind of that level. And I'm going to show you some comparison stats and just just a second in regards to some of our other players. Um, and in fact, I'll do that right now. If we have a look at kind of how he compares to those other strikers. By the way, he's English. He was born in London. So also you don't necessarily have to worry about a homegrown situation for an 18-year-old. Anyone signed at 18 in the UK is going to probably become homegrown should they stay in the club until they're 21 at least anyway. But, you know, it's good he was born in London. So you've got that connection. Maybe that's why he was more open to making the decision to join Arsenal as well. We'll hear more about him when obviously he uh, conducts a couple of interviews. But in regards to kind of the other plays is up against in the Arsenal Academy. You've got Tyrese John Jules, who's 20 years old now. He went on loan last season uh, to Doncaster, where he got five goals and three assists in 18 League One appearances, which is an okay return considering the level. He did suffer with quite a big injury as well, which meant that he had to cut his loan short, which was unfortunate. You've then got Nikolai Moller as well, who had a very decent season too, with, I mean, seven goals in the Premier League two for a striker who's just transitioning into that league is obviously really kind of impressive in the same way. It's not as impressive as like scoring absolute hatful and the same the same kind of strike rate as we've seen from BRF, but still seven goals and three assists from Nikolai Moller in his first season was very respectable. But the thing is with him is that he will now go on loan to Victoria Köln next season in the third tier of German football, which I think is a really good move for him. It allows him to develop that technical kind of side to his game where he's already got that physicality. He's very tall. That's why he's described as the next Zlatan Ibrahimovic, of course. But but uh, that's going to be a good loan for him, which will open up another spot in the under-23s. I doubt that John Jules will take that spot. I kind of imagine that John Jules may end up going out on loan again. I probably would see John Jules' future away from the club, but he's one that we shouldn't be sleeping on. In terms of other options for the under-23s that Mika Biref would be up against this season, you've also got Kayon Edwards, who's 17 years of age. He played uh, in the under-18s and played 18 times, got five goals and three assists. And uh, actually, Mika's not the only guy that we've brought in this summer for the under 23s I, I say under 23s because under 18s as well we've signed Amani Richards from Chelsea who's only 16 years old he had uh, five appearances in the under 18s got three goals and no assists but still I mean three goals in five games in the, in the under 18s is, is still pretty good and as I say he's, he's only 16 years of age so he's got a lot more development still to go but he did actually get a performance for Chelsea in an under 23 squad during that season showing kind of the amount of ambition and, and talent that's that this kid has got so he's certainly one to keep an eye on. But when you compare all of those statistics, 
And I mean, Arsenal struggled in the under-23 league last year. They just survived relegation um, from, I think they had to get a point against Aston Villa, I think it was, in the last game of the season to avoid relegation. Mika Biref is going to come in. His goals are going to be really important for kind of pushing that side back up the table. Whilst it's not necessarily that important, looking at the, the kind of the position in the table, because mainly the big players like Bakaya Saka, Martinelli, Emil Smith-Rowe, all these guys that could play in the under-23 squad, Gabriel Magalhaes could still play in the 23 squad if he wanted him to. He's still 22. Uh, all of those guys play in the first team. And that's why it's really difficult to kind of get up a real good kind of head of steam with that youth side. You've also got all the players that then go out on loan. Your Matt Smiths of this world, Daniel Ballard, etc. All going out on loan or leaving like Mark McGuinness has too. So it's, it's results in that developmental league aren't, you know, they're not pivotal. It's just important about assessing players on an individual basis and see how they're getting on. But it's important to bring in players to try and, you know, improve the quality. And I think BRF is certainly going to be a player to be able to do that. So that's all of the information that we've really got around Mika BRF. The big thing for us is going to be seeing him next season. I'm excited to give you guys some information that's going to be coming out soon. I can't reveal it just yet, but there is some plans to do a little bit more focus on youth football regarding Arsenal next season with a very very inside bit of knowledge which i'm looking forward to uh showing to you guys soon there's a little bit of a tease but uh yeah if we now move on to kind of the final part of the five minutes of the show which is getting some of your thoughts and questions in the chat box as well uh, david s says is this competition for balogun could be positive now you see that i didn't include balogun on that list of under 23 strikers and that's because balogun has of course now been promoted to the arsenal first team along with of course eddie and ketty who was already in the arsenal first team he will not be you would imagine playing too many games in the under 23s next season he's going to be on the bench in the premier league he may still end up going out on loan we don't know as of yet but balogun is certainly thought about as a player that's going to be getting a lot more time with and in around the match day premier league squads so that's why Balogun's not in there. But BRF is going to be certainly someone coming in with his eyes not set on playing under 23 football, but is wanting to get into that Arsenal first team squad as soon as possible. He's 18. I mean, you think about the amount of youngsters around these days. I mean, Bakaya Saka is, what, 19 years of age. You've got Rhys Nelson, Eddie and Ketty, Emil Smith-Rowe is only 20, Joe Willock's 21. 18 years of age is, is not like wildly young anymore which sounds crazy but 18 year olds 19 year olds get into the first team squads of clubs at the top top level very very often in this day and age of football so he will have his eyes firmly set on trying to get in and around the arsenal first team as much as possible and maybe get an opportunity in a league cup here or there i wouldn't be putting that much pressure on him right now i'd let him fester if fester's probably the wrong word i'd just let him you know, marinate uh, is a better word in the under 23s for a season, give him that experience, push him up to that next level because he was, of course, playing mainly under 18s football last year. So that next step is to now push up to the under 23s. Uh, Reese Harvey says, Has he ever played internationally? Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, and I've been on the uh, Transfer Marks website trying to get as much information, nothing has come up about playing. Uh, at, you, at the youth kind of levels for, for England under 21s or anything like that or under 18s. But if he's scoring at the rate that he is, I mean, considering he scored 21 goals in uh, 21 games, it wouldn't be unsurprising if he did end up getting a call up to the England squad. Um, but I've not seen anything officially of it, but maybe that's something that's gone under the radar a little bit. Um, let's find some more questions. Let's keep the chat focusing on uh the youth side of things first of all daniel roberts says do you think that he may be loaned out after one season with the under 23s like Moller? it's certainly something the club i think are going to be looking to do is is getting him that key experience loans has been something that arsenal need to improve on we find ourselves often loaning players out with no real kind of you know future or anything that's going to give them that edge you look at mark mcginnis for instance goes on loan to ipswich has a very decent season then we let him go to cardiff for nothing just with a sell-on clause in in the deal that saw him go and Arsenal need to be better in kind of how they deal with these situations. So we'll see how they ultimately change things and how they look to work in those areas. But I, I think it's it's probably a trajectory that they've got is they get him a year in the under-23s, get him to that level, and then send him out maybe to, to League One and, uh, and we'll go forwards from there. Uh, let's scroll down a little bit more. Uh, F4 Freestyler says, I'm really liking the idea of getting this guy in. He looks a huge 
prospect. Uh, your mama says 34 goals and appearances at 21 games is an insanely high return. I mean, if you look at kind of the amount of games he's actually played at the under 18 level, both last season and the season before, he's got a hell of a lot more goals to his. I think he's got 25 and 40, which is a really good return as well. Let's scroll down some more. Uh, Mo Fala says, are these stats from fantasy football? They're legit. Wow, it is. it's impressive, isn't it? How many goals he has got for us so far. James Rose says, should we try and get Freddie back? Freddie Jumberg, uh back as the under-23 coach, seeing as he hasn't landed a managerial job. That job in the under-23s is still up for grabs right now. At the moment, they are look, they're kind of putting forward some of the other coaches into that position just for the temporary period until they find the right guy to take over. Maybe, James, if he doesn't find that role, hasn't been offered a job yet, maybe that is something that we could look. Because he did really well with the under-23s. He was really good with the youngsters and brought a lot of good kids through uh, during that period. So 100%, if that's an option, would certainly be open to that happening. Um, Ali says, how long do you give it until fans demand he plays for the first team and start accusing Arteta of being bad with youth for not playing him? Uh, you know, probably about a good good 10 minutes. Surely we got to give him 10 minutes. Then, then, then we'll see it for sure. Uh, Talex says, uh, are you a fan of the Brentford model of having no youth set up and thus no fillers in the squad? Now, this is actually something that we talked about uh, previously on the show, we did uh, we did a show in which we kind of delved into kind of the Arsenal youth side of things anyway. Uh, and we had a chat with uh, a guy who wrote a very, very good book. Uh, Ryan, oh, his name's completely escaped me now. But a bit, uh, Ryan Baldy is his name. And he did a book called The Dream Factory. Uh, and we did a review of that book with, with Ryan. And uh, he talked about how Brentford's system of not having kind of that youth is, is kind of in a way good for them because it means they can just specifically target the players that they're going to bring through and they can give them more opportunities. But the thing is, is if everyone was to adopt that model, it would completely wreck the whole kind of grassroots system. So it wouldn't necessarily be able to take place. So whilst it's got its merits, it's not something that every club should be encouraged to do because it would wreck the entirety of the grassroots concept. But if you want to hear more about that, please do go check out my interview with Ryan Baldy, who wrote The Dream Factory, is on the channel. Just type in Laguna Talk, Ryan Baldy, and it will come up. Uh, and you can give that a good listen. Um, let's. <laughs> David says, can someone please tell me why Arteta isn't playing Mika yet? Oh, there's going to be a lot of songs, I tell you. Surely some songs. We're going to be able to get a good song for him going based upon his name. If you know, you know. Um, but I think that's probably where we're going to round off today's show. Uh, please do drop a like on the video and so show some support to the channel. As I said, you can go and find Cam on Twitter uh, to get all your latest Fulham news at 94CamRam. Link is in the description and to the at the Fulhamish pod as well. A massive thank you to Cam for providing us with the insight on uh, on Mika Biereth, who looks to be a real exciting talent for Arsenal in the coming years and maybe someone that's going to push his way into the first team in the years to come too. If you'd like the video, please drop a like on it and subscribe if you are new. We do these shows for all of Arsenal signings and of course prospective signings as well as we get linked to a plethora of different options throughout the transfer. In fact, I think we've done over 30 different tra tactical breakdowns on different transfer targets. Uh, yes, there is a tactical reason why I'm ending this show just before nine o'clock. If you know, you know. And uh, if you would like to show a little bit more support for the channel as well, you can vote for us. The information is rolling across the bottom of the screen now. You just need to go and tweet. I am voting for at Talk CV in at the FCAs for hashtag best club creator. Thanks for your support, guys. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for the 8am update show. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. And as always, up the Arsenal.